In the upper left in the GSL match through the qualifying match. He's playing for Team Liquid. It's Cure. The bottom right in the red resurgent looking better and better and better ever since Gatsby now in the winner's match of the GSL. It's stats. And man, I can't get over how much better stats is looking compared to even when he looked at Katowice. Uh, realistically, he has been solid. He tops his group in the round of 16 of the GSL, which I don't think anyone, I don't think anyone had any inkling that he was going to do that. It's like, yeah, you know, great. Stats is qualified for the GSL. He also qualified for Katowice. Good for him. But I don't think he's there yet. He, he hasn't done the hero thing. He hasn't done the classic thing, for better or worse. Classic left to military. He's like the best Protoss player in the world. And he's getting back there. He's not quite there yet, but he's getting back there. But instead, Stats is like, yeah, hold my beer. <laughs> like, I am not just going to be this really, this player that's going to go and qualify and not do much. And granted, you know, he's been about nine months now back from military I think but no he's gonna top a group with Darkin in the round of 16 he's gonna knock Dark out of the well he's not gonna knock Dark out of, out of the GSL but he is going to top a group with Dark in it which is insane that just doesn't really that's not something that we would really expect as uh, I just realized that options need to be a reset making my head blizzard. thank you anyways there we go uh, now we can see production bars and things like that. Health bars, and that seems somewhat useful. Anyways, stats goes, and he tops the round to 16. Okay, great. No way he does anything here in the GSL. No, no way he does anything in the round of eight, right? Like, this is a round of eight that's going to have Maru in it, and Hero, and maybe Byun, and Cure, obviously, and all these awesome players. No way. Absolutely no shot he's going to do anything. Well, you know what? He's here now. He's in the winner's match. He took down Shin to get here. And now we're looking at Cure for his part. We've talked a lot about stats and his run and how really exciting it is to see him truly return to form. But Cure is doing something very interesting here. This is not a Reaper expand. This is a Marine expand. And he's got a third command center on the way just about as quickly as possible. This is Barracks CC CC as greedy as possible as macro focused as possible low throwing the gauntlet down really against stats stats is known as this incredible defensive protoss player and cure saying okay that's fine go play defensive be the shield of ire let's see what you can do and i'm gonna throw that gauntlet down i'm gonna open as greedy as possible greedier by the way than most terran players will ever feel comfortable for doing uh, Bion will do a, a three cc play as we're gonna see one of these adepts you get gunned down no it's just gonna be marine going down instead uh we're gonna Yun will go for a three cc play but he'll go three racks three cc and he'll go you know well kind of like what i guess i guess is somewhat what cure is doing here uh never mind yeah this is exactly what cure is doing i was gonna say ah we're gonna see cure macro up out of this but this is three racks three cc so you get your you get your second command center you get your third command center off the first barracks and then you go and you drop two additional barracks you get stim you get combat shields you run across the map like 435 minutes with a bunch of stim bio and this is an incredible build on two axes it gives you a lot of ergonomy and it gives you a ton of army what it doesn't do is give you much in the way of tech yeah certainly stim combat shields are nice but no factory very quickly no starport very quickly no plus one uh no nothing like that so it's a lot of it's a lot of stuff but it's not as high tier of stuff as you might otherwise be getting if this was a more standard opener so for now it's a two base colossus opener from stats he's got himself a couple gateways three gateways in total no twilight and he's gonna run across the map with this war prism one stalker in there probably lift up the adepts that he has looks for a little bit of damage and with these two stalkers and or with these two adepts in the stalker he should be able to one shot I want to say two adepts and a stalker one shots. I know three adepts do. I know four stalkers do. I want to say two and one is also probably around that number. Uh, yeah, so it does. And the big thing about this from stats is not only is he going to go and try to get some damage done, knock some Marines down. By the way, seeing this number of Marines is a tell by itself. 
But more importantly, he's going to be able to see, yeah, there's a third, there's a third command center done. There's a third orbital done. I'm going to be, he's going to be able to go and take a look at and see ideally the second and third racks and get a really good idea of, of what exactly it is that stats is going for. For now, though, he's got his third base on the way. He's got the Colossus getting made. I think one might already be, no. Okay. So first one on the way, our observers course is going to pop out as well. Look for any sort of move outs and what he's doing right now oh, okay there we go now he's gonna get the scout he's gonna see well first of all he kind of knew what was happening this number of marines and marauders on a third command center it doesn't come for free and one might argue that well stats is recently back from the military so maybe he hadn't seen this before and he needed the full scout uh first of all Stats plays a lot of starcraft he plays a lot of starcraft against beyond and open cups and things like that second of all second of all if you think that stats has not been prepping for this, if you think that stats does, I'm not going to say stats has an encyclopedic knowledge of every possible build that could ever exist, because that's just not accurate. You know, that's just not realistic, but uh, there's always something that can throw him by the wayside. But stats is a good enough understanding of Starcraft too, that even if he's sitting here and he hasn't seen this exact build, he can say, ah, that's a lot of bio. That's a third base. You probably don't have a factory. You know, you probably don't have these things that I think I, I would otherwise expect you to have because there's only so much you can have in a game of StarCraft, right? You you can only allocate your resources in a certain way as this is now all under vision. It's going to get shut down, but now stats, he knows where the army is. He's not going to see the pickup, so that is something you got to be worried about. But he's, you know, okay, he sees it now. Second observer will play stats. We talk about the shield of ire. We talk about how good he is from the perspective of well just being always where he needs to be really solid defensive play but that starts aggressively that starts with vision on the map and stats knows everything that's happening i mean hey first of all this is well positioned but look at this this ring so north side he's got a rough idea if anything comes that direction and then he's got just these random pylons on the bottom side oh, well not random they're, they're there for a reason he's gonna find the medivax again this time this was the drop from the right side and he's just gonna knock it down left Stats is extremely aware of what's happening right now. And behind that, Dark Shrun's just about done. Warp Proven Speed on the way. He's got Charge just about done. His army is developing at a tremendous rate. And that means now that Stats, well, this attack up the high ground from Cure is not going to work out well. And yeah, Cure's army supply is solid. He's up about 20 army supply. His, his supply in general is pretty great. He's up seven workers. The trick is, first of all, Dark Shrine's done, so he's going to warp in a bunch of DTs for this Warp Prism. Second of all, Charge, three Colossus here. The tech is not here for Cure whatsoever. He's got a bunch of bio, and if he can get up a good arc, yeah, sure, maybe he can find something. That is a beautiful surround. That's not something that one stat, that Stats wants to attack in. Demon Force Fields for now. He's going to be Picasso, and Force Fields are his brush. It was going to keep the army out and their DTs and Zealots in the main base. So Scan gets dropped, but honestly, there's not enough to kill. Well, I guess it's only one DT. He didn't drop everything off. So, never mind. There was enough to kill all that off. But for now, in the front as well, the Colossus, with that extended thermal lance, they're just going to sit there. They're going to siege. Marauders are going to try to soak these shots because they don't die as quickly. But Zealots are going to have a lot to say about that one. Zealots and DTs in the main base as well. 21 SCVs go down. Not a single Colossus dead yet. Stats. Micro's back gently. There's no reinforcements on this army, so you got to be careful. One Colossus finally goes down. But this army has been heavily whittled down by here at this point. Stats. He's got one Marauder to deal with. He's got a couple Marines. The Marauder, he's the only thing he cares about. In fact, there's nothing that he cares about. Stats, he takes game one. So now we move into game two, and Stats did everything right in game number one. He saw what was happening. He identified that, yeah, Cure is going for this three ra three CC, three racks type of play where you go and you get aggressive, or not even really get aggressive. You play economically aggressive. You go, you get your second and your third command center up very quickly. And then you build up to this timing that this is, again, supposed to hit uh, right around five minutes. And Stats identifies this. He goes for this three gate robo play, gets a quick warp prism, gets a tiny bit of damage done. Nothing super significant, but more importantly, he identifies what Kira is doing. He knows that, yeah, Kira is going 3cc, 3 racks. He's going to hit me at 5 minutes. But also, he's not going to have Vikings. His starport is going to be much more delayed than it might otherwise be. Factories are going to be delayed, and that leads into the starport, which means there are going to be less medevacs. And that also means that as medevac production is slower, that medevac production is not going to be 
really on the same the same time the same framework that you're, you're generally looking for well he's not gonna have viking so my charge lock colossus timing should just be able to shove cure's head in if he doesn't get any damage done to me and because he was aggressive and was able to keep her back a little bit and did a really good job actually of warding away those medevacs and getting one making the other one run away just really nice positioning there good read on the game from stats well all of a sudden you're in the situation where gears up 20 army supply but he does not have the proper tech whatsoever like that army supply is real but it's not it existed but it was not good enough it didn't really count and stats runs across the map and kills his opponent but this game we are getting different things uh cure is not going for the three cc three racks build that we talked about this is a lot more standard it's a reaper it's a factory it's a command center it's a reaper expand and stats for his part we don't quite know what he's going for but he is going for a very quick sentry and i do like this there have been several changes to the century uh in the last couple balance patches it builds faster out of a gateway now obviously warp gate still the same amount of time but centuries build faster out of the gateway they are no longer light units not that it's super relevant in this matchup necessarily uh guardian shield lasts a little bit longer so if you're worried about it so you can kind of pop it before emp is also not super relevant here but because it is able to build just a little bit faster getting going for these century openers makes a lot of sense you're able to go and get that first century first of all let you play defensively force field things off if you really need to but more importantly gets you a hallucination and we're going to see stats save up for the energy for that he doesn't quite have it there we go so hallucination is ready we're going to see the phoenix on the map and stats should have 100 certainty about what exactly his opponent's going for he should know what's happening now granted there's a hellion on the map and the phoenix probably won't see that well no no never mind <laughs> they'll cross paths anyway so it'll see the phoenix the phoenix will see the hellion the phoenix is going to be able to dive into the main base seeing okay there are a bunch of marines that's fine but more importantly this is one 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 i see how much gas you mind uh you mind cure i have a really good idea what you're going for so stats is well situated he's not necessarily going to see the drop move out but he's also aware that there's a widow mine on the natural so he knows that this is not some sort of weird well actually he saw the second uh, the second and third barracks anyways but uh this is not some sort of weird one 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 with tank liberator or something like that so stats is well positioned or i don't know that he's well positioned yet but he's well situated to handle whatever it is that here wants to throw at him so for now he's gonna run the army back home probe is gonna die at the hands of the reaper and the hellion but still a really nice scout for stats and now well we're gonna see stalker in the wall so that should block things out for the most part and in the main base well stats is moving himself to be exactly where he wants to be I don't know that the pylon saw this well I don't know if it did or it didn't but the stalkers are in perfect position to make sure that this drop gets nothing done so drop gets nothing done the reaper the hellion at the front tries to get something done really doesn't accomplish much of anything and stats totally deflects this now granted widow mine drops can find their way in later and you can cause problems but uh stats the first blush of this as the widow mine drops gonna try to show up right now probes are gonna get pulled very nice the stalker dies uh, it's not what you want you ideally wouldn't lose a stalker but widow mine is gonna try to run away stalkers are gonna kill that off second one also gonna try to reburrow but stalkers have blink now so that's not really gonna happen I guess I'm a little bit surprised to see here not attempt to go and pick the widow mines up and do it again like the, the medevac took zero damage and it's and especially with a stalker going down like that it feels like you could probably go and, and and save them but I guess he just considers it not worth it at the time being you'd rather be able to go and put a hellion in that maybe although a single hellion doesn't do a lot that being said those stats you lost a stalker lost a probe less workers than you would normally lose a little bit more economy than you would or a little bit more army than you would normally lose in this hellion it's a single hellion <laughs> i'm not exactly sure what sure what cure wants to do with that single hellion i guess it's more of a scout than anything else but it is a single wounded hellion and a single damaged medevac uh okay cure. Oh, okay cure. <laughs> have fun with that one
So, now that this hasn't really worked out for much of anything, Stats is properly on three bases. He's up, not, he's up eight workers. He's exactly where he wants to be. Colossus on the way. Extended Thermal Lance, just about done. Plus one halfway done. We're not going to see it for the first fight, but Cure's setting himself up for, well, a bit of a multi prong Stalks bling on top of the first Medivac. Knock that one down. Yeah, they got some units out, but it's only one Medivac. It's actually only zero Medivacs. Zealots in as well. Widow Mines are, well, actually, they're, what they hit at? I'm not even sure. They didn't really hit much of anything. Bio's not killing a ton here. Charge is now done, and the attack on the right side was not well situated. This really looked like something where Cure was going to go, and he's going to attack on the left side, right side simultaneously, and yeah, pull stats out of position, except he doesn't go for it. He doesn't run in on the right side with the left side. Maybe he poked and I didn't see it, and the Colossus were a little bit too scary on that poke. I, I don't know, but this attempt at a multi-prong from Cure just, it was a multi-prong with a single prong. It was a broken pitchfork, is <laughs> what it was. Yeah, you, you kind of need all time to make, make this totally viable that being said he's gonna try again so he's got a drop on the left side he's got a bunch of units on the right side and by the way stats is vision for any sort of reinforcing line it, yes he i think he's i think he's aware that these medevacs are here pretty sure he saw those uh and certainly he's aware of them now curious not gonna <laughs> that's a little bit awkward this was visible on the mini map for just a little bit of time so stats recalls back in doesn't really take much damage from it does have to spend his recall so that's 45 seconds on the map where Stats is not going to have that powerful defensive tool, but already he's re repositioning. He he started to figure out what exactly the game is that Kier wants to play. That is five medevacs trying to drop down on this fourth base, but Stats is already here. The Zealots by themselves are not enough to defend against this. So this fourth base, despite Stats running over, it will be canceled. There is another warp in. There are more Colossus. But now Stats is just, or now Kier's just going to pick up going to the main base. What am I gets a Zealot or two? We have some Stalkers here, but you got to find the right angle, Stats. He's got him selected. At the moment he's not going to get all that much done that's just playing immaculate defense yeah losing the fourth base is unfortunate but more than anything that's just a factor of how the map works <laughs> like stats was rotating the second he went back into the main base he started rotating over to the fourth he knew how this game was going to go unfortunately it is a long distance to go and try to get yourself situated on over to the fourth base for the main the drop distance is not nearly as much stats has to micro these colossus away good force field great force field is going to keep that one low colossus alive yeah pylon's going to go down but at this point there is no way for cure to get on top of these colossus anymore not with guardian shield not with everything else so stats keeps everything alive loses the war prism it's not great but vikings were well positioned it's also really nice news for stats he knows now that there are colossus on or that there are vikings on the field he knows that there is an answer a zealot oh single zealot it looks like ran into the third base gets three scvs but he, he knows that there's an answer to his colossus play this is not game number one or even say a beyond game where cure over commits the ground over commits the medevacs doesn't get enough vikings and you can run across the map and win on the colossus timing well that that doesn't exist this game that's not gonna happen this game not for stats so he's still gonna hold the high ground he's still gonna have well i guess low ground now he's gonna hold this position he's got some stalkers in this army as he blinks forward knocks a, knocks a marauder down okay stats if anyone looked at this series and said ah you know i don't know how stats i don't know how stats is feeling right now i don't know if he's feeling incredible or not what, what form he's in yeah he won game one but that was pretty simple right well put, running a zealot over to soak the widow mine to immediately pick it up to dodge the widow mine shot with your warp prism to make sure you can get your fifth base up is just so sexy i love that so much it's so good but now you got to be careful that's a big widow mine shot that's a second dead warp prism uh that's needs to make sure to keep his warp prism behind the army if he doesn't want to get aggressive so he's sitting here right he's on five bases soon enough four bases totally up and man I know I've been talking about this all series, but one thing that stats does better than pretty much anyone, Showtime is, is decent at this, Max Tax can be good at this, Classic can be really solid at this, but Stats' vision is so good on the map. He knows everything that might possibly be happening as now Disruptors are starting to hit the field, but more importantly, Stats also realizing that, yeah, yeah okay, I'm not going to win on the ground anymore. The Terran Bio Army eventually gets a little bit too strong. Uh, it's Disruptors going to fall, but... 
the other ones will will serve to zone just zone just a little bit as vikings run forward here stalkers on hold position but the colossus are dying this is actually a really good timing for here right now the defensive utility of sets not really there disruptor shot solid though disruptor shot is really good zealous warp in after the emp as well excellent split so yeah scary moment for stats losing all the colossus but he had enough disruptors done he had enough disruptors on the way that it was fine but again it looks like stats has identified that yeah you know what late game terran on the ground oh he could get a ghost here target the ghost down he's gonna get it very nice late game ground against terran just doesn't feel very good oh that's a good disruptor shot maybe it does feel good uh but it's, it's not consistent you're not going to consistently be able to go and win on the ground against a terran player in the late game yeah stats economy is really good <laughs> it is extremely extremely good and you can try to play the style where it's charged lot stalker disruptor and you are just you're on 80 86 probes you're playing like a zerg right you're you're 86 uh, you're on 80 probes you're on 90 probes you're not really focused on playing resource efficient although stats has actually lost less resources than cure this game but you're not really focused on playing cost efficiently so much as you are just playing on the map playing uh out trading out not out efficiency but uh playing on your bigger economy to win this war of attrition and for now stats is well situated if he wants to play that style he's decently well situated for it he's got five bases up six base on the way cures only on four but he's not gonna go that route he's going that in the mid game just to make sure he stays alive he's maxed out on it of course but he's got a bunch of uh, uh, a bunch of carriers on the way plus one air attack is done plus two is on the way he's adding plus one air army he's got double cyber core here and he's gonna move into this very heavy carrier play that can reach these critical mass situations now if the terran identifies it and they get up to like 30 vikings or something 60 army supply where the vikings maybe even more uh so they get into this like viking viking liberator composition you absolutely can go and it becomes very hard for the protoss player to respond you need really good storms maybe it gets a little bit dicey but before that point this this carrier army is just really hard to deal with so for now stats is sharking around a little bit looking for an angle he's not gonna find it here and scan goes off doesn't actually see much as widow mines will start to fall down but here's getting himself set up for his own little bit of a flank Armies in the middle. Disruptors are on behind. Stats is going to have to try to take this fight. Zoning zoning disruptors are going to do a pretty nice job of this, actually. And stats, this looked like it was going to be a pretty rough fight, but it's actually not all that bad whatsoever. Yeah, the sentries are dying, but the disruptors will actually know the Vikings are going to land. And I thought this was pretty decent. I thought the disruptors were going to do a little bit more. They're not. Cure wins the fight. But what this also does for stats it's more room for more supply he's got four carriers on the way at a time what he lost was stalkers he lost zealots he lost uh, a single disruptor not all that big of a deal but he's freed up supply for a ton of carriers and by the way not only did he free up supply for carriers it's only six vikings on the field he went and he cleaned up a lot of the viking cat which means if he can just defend this base with his charge lot disruptor type of idea if he can just kind of sit there and do that he can sweep out across the map with six to eight carriers maybe hide them as long as possible and just not give cure this opportunity to remax into a bunch of vikings that's honestly even worse give it worth giving up the sixth uh, the sixth base because again realistically this timing with plus two air attack with plus one air armor is really nice stalkers blink on ah they blink on top of widow mine but stats is the timing now he's sitting here he's on six carriers they have plus two attack they got plus one armor they've uh, yeah they got plus one shield as well and now disruptors are gonna get jumped upon right now cure this is a good move this is what you really want because the splash damage is super important in this carrier army eventually you want to make sure that you have something to prevent the bio from just diving on top of your units and that's what the disruptors are for carriers kind of defend the disruptors in the same way so without that this is a little bit awkward and now stats is back down to four bases this impeccable defense that he's been playing the good majority of this game is not really there anymore one carrier is going to go down second one is going to get targeted down here but they're actually running out of anti-air no second carrier will fall down anyways and for what he's getting cure is annihilating stats right now this is so worthwhile he got two bases he got two carriers he got all the disruptors and all of a sudden there is nothing left for stats to defend he's got a bank sure 
six carriers in a dream is not enough here he's only back down to three bases that entire bank is gonna have to get spent pretty much on building three more next eye that's your 1200 minerals right there so i guess that's actually 14 1350 anyway that's all your money right that's your entire mineral bank if you're gonna try to rebuild all three nexus so stats it's kind of got to go he's got this powerful timing certainly he's got himself up on six plus two carriers now we're gonna see an army try to dive on top of the carriers not a single one goes down stats despite everything going wrong here he still has this timing. he's on 50 uh, 60 interceptors and there's just not enough anti-air right now vikings going down as they show up marauders are here but like who cares <laughs> the marauders don't matter they don't shoot up the only thing that matters is anti-air problem is stats needs to make run needs to run pedal to the metal on this giving his opponent time to build five six vikings at a time makes this rather more difficult stats cannot be happy with just knocking one base down he's still down a base on his opponent he needs to make something happen with this and i'm concerned that he's not moving quickly enough even getting that base i don't think that's the play i think you just gotta go right now with stats and go and just kill 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 keep killing the units camp the production make it so that there's nothing the, the terran player can do because yeah i understand stats go back expand make something happen sure fine but that timing stats had where he was where there was just about no anti-air and stats had these eight carriers well now it's 14 vikings now it's a now it's a couple goats for the emp this is not nearly as good so emps they go off but guardian shield gets popped beforehand and now the fight's gonna happen once again archons aren't here though that splash damage that can try to fuzzy the math on these viking fights it's just not there at the moment vikings are shooting marines are all dead archons are not under the vikings they're fighting the marauders which truly does not matter here it's all about the vikings it's all about the carriers and they are going down interceptors sure they're fine but it's only two carriers on the field right now and yeah that might win this fight it has probably one cure of the game he's got the reinforcement potential he's got the ability to build enough vikings to deal with these last two carriers on the map that's what are you building you got more bases on the way you were able to shut down that orbital from over the main base so technically actually i guess that, I guess that was from the natural okay <laughs> main base and natural at the same time so hey yeah, maybe not actually stats he's gonna be able to shoot this away these are plus three stalkers they they're gonna kill this orbital so we are now at two orbital terror one planetary two total two bases really against a Protoss player that has two and a half bases now really closer to three bases in, in terms of total mining now widow mines are going to be retargeting they're going to be annoying there that has to respond to this but this it doesn't feel great for stats certainly not he's only on two carriers 10 stalkers dt's though is being very annoying here shutting down some of the economy and it's going to force a uh, okay emp not a scan yeah you, you really can't afford scans in this game so if stats can last another 30 seconds we see how we look at Cure's economy and we say, hey, look, he's mining 3,000 minerals a minute. That's a mule hammer, right? That is two orbitals dropping literally every single mule that they have. That's not sustained income. That is just a burst. So stats can get to a point where he can get up three more carriers, maybe something like that. He's actually going to be in a great spot. This game, he needs two minutes, three minutes, probably. Uh, and uh, that's probably going to be enough to get him to put him in to almost an unlosable position in this game because again the economy is going to be so much better this only two mineral patches and it's very little only 500 minerals right there but for now cure does not want to give him that time so zealous are going to warp in they're going to miss the first dmp and it's just a bunch of marines right getting into disruptors right now stats is working on that doesn't really have them just yet would be incredible now the carriers have to be so careful looking to micro away one of them will fall second one is going to go down as well where are our disruptors did they go down there there are two of them they're somewhere they weren't available for the fight stats desperately microing but it's plus three bio disruptors are going to show up right now and they're not going to get enough just yet there's a second one on the way this has to be everything for stats right now he doesn't get what he needs pick up micro from cure means that everything at least enough stays alive stats needed 30 more seconds to win this game cure did not give him that time not at all the base is dead stats now his economy back to shattered zealots doing a great job of dealing with the reinforcements absolutely but this nothing deals with this army right now 23 army supply for stats he's got one disruptor 
again this is one of those situations where i just don't i think stash should have just given the base up he would have been on three bases versus or two bases versus three with a more efficient army now the disruptor is dead stats is dead and cure sends us to game three. Oh, we're in game three stats really nice first 10 minutes of game number two excellent first 10 minutes of game number two and then he moves on and loses all of his disruptors everything falls apart still has an opportunity but doesn't lean into it enough maybe the attrition would have been too bad i don't know but doesn't lean into it enough and then cure and eventually it kills him you know stats had a nice uh, comeback potential he kills a base he shuts down economy and maybe he does come back if he's given like 30 more seconds but that's what happens in pro level play if you need 30 seconds your opponent's not going to give it to you that's just how that works that being said if you do like this and you enjoy starcraft content five six seven days out of the week i i do my best to get six vods out a week uh, it doesn't always happen but anyways if you like that you should go sub to the youtube channel there was a little stinger that just showed up a second ago you should go and sub to the channel so you can get access to starcraft content and stormgate content when that happens when the nda is is released as uh that floats up and down all those things you should go and, and, and hit that sub button also i stream on twitch so go follow me there and uh i'll see you when i'm live also i do stream live on youtube so you can do that as well that being said we're into game three it's gonna be nothing crazy from cure nothing crazy from well actually no it is gonna be something a little bit crazy from cure what am i saying it's a it's not too wild by any stretch of the imagination not something that we would we've never seen before but this is barracks double gas factory into an expand so we've been following this this pattern of cure he's going he's getting less and less greedy as the series goes on game one was yeah i'm going three cc three racks and uh, i don't know whether i can call that greedy necessarily it is very economic focus certainly but also you you're looking to hit a fairly quick timing and it, it's it's aggro greed probably the way to talk about it. it's aggressive greed but anyway we see cure going for that in game one this aggressive greed and then game two he says yeah i'm gonna play pretty standard i'm gonna play reaper hellion or you know, like reaper expand hellion just for scouting widow mine two widow mine widow mine drop nothing insane just a very standard tvp and now in game three on alcyony we're seeing the most aggressive version of that we're seeing barracks double gas factory and now into this uh into the starboard right so this is much quicker drops this is much more committed drops and how well this works out well we're gonna have to find out but for now the reaper should die stalker yeah it's gonna get the last shot so full scout on the main base is gonna see that yeah there's a twilight on the natural i don't know if he saw that it was being chronoed but sees the twilight on the natural and is well aware of what's happening so that's where we are how many widow mines on the field it's three so it's gonna be a triple widow mine drop coming out of stats or coming out of cure not the two and does he move out with anything else there's been some interesting tech where you move out with a little bit more than just the drop kind of your kitchen sink whatever else you've built and maybe try to hit two angles at the same time but it's not happening and in fact it's not even going to be a triple widow mine drop it's going to be two widow mines in the medevac but the other one looks like it might try to run into the natural hmm i love that now that being said this this widow mine stats does he see it yep he does he's aware of what's happening so he should have stalkers in the wall very well aware of that in the main base as well this is not gonna get anything done stats is so good guys i know i'm just saying that and okay a probe went down third base gonna get denied a little gonna get delayed slightly but it's fine that is a okay uh and i know i've just been spending the series geeking out about how good stats is but first of all first of all Rodas is doing well. The patch worked. Second of all, I'm just a big, big stats fan. Um, sorry about that. But also, more importantly, it is so refreshing to see a Protoss player succeed on their defensive merits. Not on, well, hey, I'm Max Pax, and I got a crazy build I'm going to throw at you, and I'm going to win. Or, hey, I'm Max Pax, and I'm <laughs> I'm going to four-gate blink you, and good luck stopping it. Now, in fairness, that's also really fun, but we've had kind of one dimension of successful Protoss in the last bit or so. It's like one dimensional. It's uh, 
Protoss go and they get aggressive and they win or lose on that aggression for the most part. Yeah, Showtime is, is more on the stats vein, but for the most part, it kind of very one dimensional Protoss play. And stats is here saying, and in fact, I talked to Protoss players leading up to Katowice and I was told, yeah, like two gate blink, three gate, bl like two gate defensive blink. Now, granted, that's not what stats quite went for this game, but two gate defensive blink is uh, this Raven is not going to get anything done. Just takes a lot of damage. Uh, these stats-esque builds, these stats-esque styles are just not good. You gotta give, you gotta put the Terran on the back foot. They will always have more agency on the map. They will always have more power. So your job as a Protoss player is to make sure that they can never be in the same plan. Like you have to be leaning into them at all times. And stats is here like, uh, no, I don't. I can just deflect everything the Terran sends at me and I can win games like that or the Zerg for that matter. Uh, and that's not to say that stats won't be aggressive. Game one, he identified what the Terran was doing. He deflected it perfectly and then killed him. You know, we, we, I've seen in EPT cups recently, this little mind drops going to try to find that third base, but ah, there are Colossus. Well, he's going to kill two probes. Oh, nice force field as well. It's going to kill off one of the widow mines, not both, but uh, it does get one of them. But Seth certainly can get aggressive as well. He's not just a one-dimensional come attacking to me, win or lose. He's not Serral from 2018, which granted the Serral won a BlizzCon doing that, but even still, you know, he's not one-dimensional. He's just very good and doesn't feel the need to get aggression. Oh, he's going to get the... Oh, no, he doesn't get the Raven. And this siege up position actually can be very scary for stats right now. It's two tanks, third base on the way on the low ground here. Cure trying to make up for any defensive or economic inequities that he didn't otherwise have. And now the tanks are in range of the forge. So stats, it does feel like he's going to have to make something happen with this. Widowmind drop goes off. Stats, bit of a late. No, oh, that's a good split. So only one, only one more probe goes down. We're going to see the medevac die. Stats just has to cancel this plus one. He's not going to be able to keep those upgrades alive. Doesn't have the gas either. So Cure has found a really nice position to wedge himself into. And now he's going to get on top of the Robo Bay. He's going to start to put pressure on that one. We're going to see stats going for Warp Prism Speed, which is really, we, we've seen him do that every game this series, at least the, the macro games. He seems to really like it. Gives you a lot of maneuverability. For now, we're going to see the Raven go down. The Colossus, they need to get a little bit further forward. It's a little bit awkward on these tanks. And man, tanks take so little damage from these Colossus. So a lot of Stalkers go down. And in the main base, we're going to see another drop. Stalkers blink on top. Don't get the medevac quickly enough. They do kill it. But this drop in the main base is going to clean up everything that has warped in. All of a sudden, with a mind, friendly fire gets a single Marine. Not really much more than that. But all of a sudden here, Cure is finding a lot of avenues. Again, I, I've been been keeping praises upon stats of defensive acumen. But Cure has found this opening where he's attacking in like three spots at the same time. And he's actually finding damage. He's getting not probes necessarily. We've seen six total probes die this game. So he's not really hindering the economy. But he has killed 10 stalkers. He's killed some zealots. He denied plus one. He got an observer. He has, you know what actually is I think about that 10 stalkers is the most expensive thing. Ideally, you kind of want to get your stalkers and then never lose them. Get up to like 12 or so uh, enough to deal with medevacs and widow mines as this speed prism is going to see exactly what's happening. here. He's like, oh, well, okay. I know where your drop is. Technically, this means Cure should also be aware of what's happening. In fact, Stats is going to double back a little bit on this. Okay, Warp Prism just going back home. Going to provide a little bit of a flanking angle as he tries to take his fourth base. I, I guess that's what that's going to be for. Maybe. Oh, he's just going to go all the way around back home, up to the north side, making a full J-hook. As for now, Stats is just going to annihilate this army. So this is not a drop cleanup where you kind of trade out a little bit. This is just annihilating the army to try to find an advantage. But that also means that Cure... And try to go find his way in through the middle straight up the gull it's gonna force a recall and that does provide remove one tool from stats but he 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 sweeps clean the drop on the right side really doesn't lose much more than a pylon and that attack through the middle and now his war prism on the other side because it's a speed prism because it's so fast it can find its way into the main base it can find its way into the natural it can swing around the map very nicely so this one of mine will fall and now well yeah there's a viking here so this war prism is probably dead eventually depending on where it decides to go uh, there's no recall so probably is is gonna fall oh mm, it's found an angle it's gonna get out very nice there very nicely done there stats uh it, so war prism's gonna get out zealots do a great job of distracting they get like six scvs maybe they get a couple marines maybe they 
knock down a supply depot from here but stats all of a sudden has a significant supply lead on his terran opponent his upgrades aren't as fast as they would like to be he's only got one one they were slowed down by that by that uh that tank pressure as we're gonna see this mood of mine drop die as well they were slowed down by the tank pressure so there is that right and certainly also stats no two two on the way now it's getting started but uh, I guess he wanted to go and save his money a little bit for things like disruptors which he has them on the way right now and it's important to remember disruptors have been the blessing and the bane of stats in this series as uh, these zealots will fall down uh, you gotta be careful if you're the Protoss player on the one hand zealot run buys can be really nice they can break a game wide open they can get a ton of damage done they can force the Terran back home but you do have to be careful as this war prism should be able to escape the Vikings just barely you do have to be careful with your zealot run buys it is very easy to throw a thousand minerals away and get nothing done and you do that a couple times and all of a sudden you are not gonna say you're, you've lost the game but you're in a really rough spot so stats he's got his uh, counterattack pulled in the left side the zealots on the right side he's got his fifth base on the way taking a fight in the middle of the map stalkers blink forward they got a ghost which is fantastic we do get emp'd for it but that'll regen it's fine and stats is just getting himself set up he owns this map right now it, it feels a it's a very scary map for cure to exist on now zealots are going to try to run in and they're a little bit early i think stats is going to try to sync those up with an attack in the in the third but he just doesn't commit all the zealots go down and just a little bit de asynchronous a little bit desynced and if stats has hit that time i think that would have been really nice it's like yeah you either have 10 zealots in your natural and you're defending your third or you're probably losing the third orbital there are enough stalkers that i think that is I, I think that would have been the case but again these are minor losses stats continues to I, again I, i've been saying this every game in the series look at stats's vision this looks like a zerg this looks like what a zerg would see on the map I, this is he's got everything there is no way there's zero way and okay well <laughs> an observer gets out one second time second scan is or Actually, I guess it was the missile turret that, that revealed it the first time. So scan gets dropped, observer will fall. There is no angle on the map really that, that Kira can look to find that properly keeps that, that allows him to get anywhere. Yeah, there's this random widow mine and that provides, you know, a tiny little bit of vision on this base. But look at how much vision Kira has on the map. Complete. And look how much vision stats has. It's not even close. Stats is so incredibly aware of everything that's happening and you start to lose some observers sure it's unfortunate but by losing the, the losing the observer is not really the end of the world in part because now he knows where the army is like okay well i just saw a significant amount of your army you just killed my observer all right i know what's up and also stats is we, we talked about this in game two eventually right around you know roughly when the Terran gets to 2-2 or so you hit this point as the Protoss player where all of a sudden it doesn't feel all that good your ground army it really does time out in a pretty significant way so you gotta transition either go into this very cost inefficient uh, ground blink stalker charge lot disruptor play which something hero plays a lot of by the way uh or you go into sky toss and stats really see, stats and classic both actually really seem to be on this opinion that you play this mid game you play aggressively defensively whatever it is but you look to transition into sky toss nice pickup there on the medevac and stats is getting some pretty solid trades yeah he's lost a lot as ellis but resource loss are fairly even but we are hitting this timing right now that stats has to be extremely afraid and it, it's a very slim window it's about a minute long or so where you make the transition into air you say okay i'm gonna go and i'm going to attack I, i'm going to build all these carriers fine i'm gonna go do that thing a stats is gonna trade a base for a ba actually no he recalled into the natural but it's only disruptors that's a jumpable army cure if he notices what's happening if he can bait out the shots well enough he can turn around emp this and go to town but for right now it's a bunch of bio being chased by a bunch of disruptors which feels really weird he loses the north side base stats is gonna lose two bases but 
I think as Stats, you're kind of okay with this. Losing the probes feels a little bit worse. Actually feels a lot worse. But I think as Stats, you're mostly okay with this because what this means... Ooh, not enough medevacs. Here's going to have to... Or Stats are going to bring the army back home. He's going to get three ghosts, a bunch of marauders. Yeah, he will lose some stalkers here. Actually, lose a decent amount of stalkers, man. Plus three marauders with EMPs on top. Shred. But anyway, Stats has the north side base up, so he's still on four bases. He has fifth base on the way. And more importantly, he has survived the scary window and I'll, it's like wow he lost two bases does he truly survive yeah, i'd say so because now he's got four carriers on the map he's got more carriers on the way he's got one one for these carriers for these interceptors he's knocking down Ooh, viking catch very nice there's gonna get a second not quite uh, but again the, this timing window where you're kind of worried that you're gonna lose the game well or you're kind of worried that I not even lose the game, that a lot of your resources and a lot of your supply are tied up in these units that take, even with Chrono, that take forever to build. And all of a sudden, well, yeah, you lost two bases for it, but you traded one, you got some Vikings, you killed some ghosts. If he kept the probes alive, it would have been incredible, but as it stands, not, not too bad. And now you got this army that you've been trying to get yourself up to. You didn't lose any disruptors on the recall either. It was a very ballsy recall, but you don't really lose a lot there. And now you got this Colossus Disruptor Archon. It's incredibly... I mean, look how expensive this army is. It's so much more gas. The mineral count's actually fairly even, but it is just worth so much more gas than what stats has... Uh, than what Cure has. This is a terrifying army for Cure to fight, but he does... He's on double starport, I think. Maybe even more? Where's the starports at? No, he's on quad starports, so he can build the Viking count that he needs to, to properly handle this. Or should he lose a fight to build eight Vikings at a time and get himself up in like two or three production cycles to an army that is, if not reasonable, at least manageable. So he's going to try to attack into this. He's got a ton of liberators and with no Tempest, no Storm, I think we might just see stat. Yeah, he's going to give the position up. Probes are going to get pulled away. He's going to... Oh, actually, yeah, this is a pretty solid. He, so the Vikings run forward. As a Viking player, what you want to do is you want to sit on the edge of the least range of the interceptors so you can kind of kite backwards kite forwards especially uh, that changed a couple patches ago that made vikings significantly more microable a uh, cure went a little bit too far forward and that meant he sat under this aegis of interceptors for a little bit longer than he should have and that meant that led to a significant viking that was like five dead vikings just instantaneously so this base will fall stats will be able to get some revenge on the bio as uh, these Marines are not going to get dealt with, I guess. Stats are going to lose the bottom side base. Does he lose the bottom right? He probably should. Yeah. Going to have to cancel that one. Again, Cure will lose the army that did this. But it's kind of fine. Because he's building eight Vikings. Because he's replacing this with army that is... Uh, he's getting some Marines. But for the most part, he's replacing this with army that is better. So for now, Stats are going to try to move up on top of the gold base. Trying to get some revenge for the economy that he's lost. Liberators are going to siege, but I mean, nope, that's not a thing. <laughs> that is a very dead orbital very quickly. Plus two carriers are terrifying. You talk to Rotterdam, plus two carriers are just about the best timing that exists in the game of StarCraft 2. Disruptors are going to try to burst this planetary down. They're not going to go down at the moment. And we're going to have to see if this fight's going to work. Interceptors on top of the Vikings right now. They're so stacked up. They're begging for a storm, and it is done. And it's going to go on top of everything. It's massive. It's an insane storm. But we have no interceptors on the field anymore. Storm also killed off a lot of those interceptors. So we're looking at how many Vikings on the field. Seven Vikings. Disruptors are going to try to knock this army down. Great disruptors there. Knock down all the bio. Storms continue to get damage down here. But Stas does have to retreat these interceptors. It's only six of them. They do not do the damage that you're looking for at the moment. They're, they're not as good as the fact that Cure is building six, eight Vikings at a time. So this was a great fight to go and break the game open for Stats. But make no mistake about it. This was not cheap. And Stats' economy is not as good as he would like it to be. He's on four bases. He's trying to get this fifth base up again. He killed the gold base to Cure. He killed another orbital to Cure. But Cure's on five bases. And by the way, this is a planetary. This is not the main base that was floated over like we talked about in game number two. Cure's economy is going like gangbusters. Stats, he has this powerful army. He's got his interceptor count up for the most part. Oh, nice. Well, I guess four times eight is 32. He's got like two thirds of his interceptors. 
Uh, so he's getting there. But also, again, because of this economy, he's not really, he can't really, aff really afford to rebuild more carriers. It kind of, this is a one-off timing. One carrier's dangling a little bit. That's not what you want, but oh, Archons are going to try to get on top of this. Now EMPs pop them like lead balloons. Uh, actually, lead balloons are not, are, are, I imagine it would be pretty difficult to pop. Pop them like helium-filled balloons. There we go. Uh, so that happens. Liberator on the left side kills off 10 probes here. And the stats his economy is... Yeah. He's gonna try to jump on top of this planetary though. He feels so pressured to get on top of the planetary with how much economic damage he's taking. But the carriers are dangling. The planetary will not fall and stats throws everything away. There was not enough splash in that army. No storms. Archons not where they needed to be. Disruptors not getting the shots they needed. And now everything in stats' army is dead. Stats is dead. He falls down and Cure moves on to the round of four. It's a date with Maru in that GSL semifinals.